Welcome this morning. It is American Baptist Women's Sunday today, and we um, have a lovely group of ladies today that will be leading our service. And so I want to thank them for doing this for us and for Nola for speaking and Nola for Big Truck Night the other night. If, that, if you missed Big Truck Night, you missed a wonderful, fun evening. Uh, the drivers were exceptionally welcoming to our kids, I thought, and it was just a fun night. And today Christy will be installed and we are excited to have her on board too. We um, uh, have a group of pictures that Pastor took the other night as well as grandparent night and they're in the parlor and if you would like to see those pictures, uh, go in and have coffee today. <coughs> Today, I'd like to just share with you a little bit about American Baptist women. If you attend First Baptist, you are an American Baptist woman, if you are a woman. Better clarify that. We have four circles, three that meet during the day and one in the evening. And if you do not attend cir uh, a circle, uh, you're missing a part of the fellowship of First Baptist. And I invite you to become part of a circle. We always have a devotional, a program, and just a fellowship together. Then the first Thursday of each month, we meet as a group, and we always have a, usually a speaker, except the other day we went to school, back when we were in kids, and I was a terrible speller and I won. I could, <laughs> I'm so excited about that. I was always good in math and I flunked. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't so great. Our circles have two mission projects I would like to share with you. One is our love gift. It's a, an offering we take each month at our circles that go uh, to support our missionaries. And the other is White Cross. And you will find in the pews an envelope that says White Cross. White Cross is a, an opportunity for our missionaries around the world to re uh, request special things that they need. This year, our request that came to our women can, uh, will go um, to an Indian uh, church in Oklahoma, and they have requested things like basketballs, dolls, games, books, toiletries, clothes, a quilt, uh, and the list goes on and on. It will be about $400. And so our goal this year is to raise. Last year our goal was $400, and your generosity far exceeded our goal, and for that we were very thankful. And so pick up the envelope out of the pew, or you can just give a, a donation directly to one of our officers. <clears throat> this morning, um, as we begin our service, would you turn to the call of worship on the back inside of your bulletin? 
shall we read together? A wife of noble character, can, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Many women do noble things, but you suppress them all. Charm is deceit, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Dorothy, would you come and lead us, please? Following the hymn, would you please stand? Uh, we will greet one another. Turn to, page, turn to page 11, please, and please stand. We will be singing the first verse only. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm the chairman of our Christian Ed Board, and it is my pleasure to be able to um, do the installation that we have for Christy. Um, we have we have her down as a youth slash children's uh, ministry coordinator because she's going to be in charge of the youth, but she's also in charge of the entire program that we have here at our church for all of our young people. So if you would please take out the consecration page out of your um, bulletin, and we'll read this together. <laughs> Loving God, creator of heaven and earth, like you feed us with gifts that sustain our bodies and enrich our lives. We praise you. God of compassion, you choose women and men 
and made them alive to your love. They have spoken your truth. They marked places that, with stones as signs of your presence. called to move, as he did, among the people, to feel with them, to care for them, to touch them, and be touched by them. called to discern those gifts of life God has heaped deep within each of us. Called to place our gifts in God's hands, the holy hands from which they came, called to follow Jesus. called to be God's children. Okay. okay, today we come to install Christy Horseman um, to set her apart as one of uh, those men or women to whom we, the church, look to be equipped as a servant of God. Um, set an example to life lived before God, and lead us in shared sacrificial service. And I'm going to give a charge to the church. We want to continue to walk with Christy on her journey, leading her to support through prayer, friendship, and wise counsel. Help her as she seeks to broaden and deepen the church's ministry to the least of these, and the church's partnership with other caregiving organizations. Speak a word on her behalf and to open doors for her among all, of, all that you know. Do all you can to provide opportunities to grow in the knowledge and expertise that she might better serve God. Mourn with her when she mourns. Celebrate her when she celebrates. Care for her when she needs special care. Be the good family of God in her life. And now to Christy. Uh, we are commissioned to serve as a youth minister for this, your church family. I charge you to practice humbly all the days of your ministry so that in word, deed, heart, and thought, you reveal the humble Christ to all those around you. Practice good stewardship of your life, your energy, your health, and mind and body, that you might serve in unhindered all the days of your life. Pursue with diligence multiple avenues of learning, that you might maximize the scope of the excellence of your service. Practice the fine art of trusting those with whom you work, both clergy and laity, even as Christ trusted you. Practice meaningful forgiveness that you might deal with the inevitable disappointments and hurts that ministry may bring to you, yet be unstained. Practice worship in the company of others and in private, that God might better guide you and sustain you. Encourage and smooth the way for those who come after you, that God's work might more abound. Minister in such a way that you reveal and model the redemptive love of God. And may the Lord who called you bless, preserve, and keep you as you minister in the name of Christ all the days of your life. And we would like to have the 
young people that are going to be part of the youth group to come up. Um, we've got a um, tape that we're going to have for, um, for Christy. Uh, and if there's anybody from the Christian Ed Board that would like to also come up during this time, you're welcome to do that. Uh, Christy has a mentor that she has had for several years um, in her life through all the um, schooling that she has had. And her mentor is Reverend Lisa Sherman. And she has sent a videotape. Um, she couldn't be here today because she's um, the minister, one of the ministers for the police department in Omaha, and she's at a training session today. So she couldn't be here. The tape is rather quiet, so you may have to strain to hear it. But she has a message for Christy, and then she also has a prayer at the end for her. Good morning. I am Lisa Sherman, and I am the lead pastor at Faith Christian Church in Omaha. And I'm also a police chaplain with the Omaha Police Department. I am so sorry that I cannot be with you this morning as you celebrate the installation of Christy Horstman. I serve on the state of Nebraska's critical incident rapid response team. And sadly, I have training this weekend out of town that I was not able to change. I wish that I could be there not only to celebrate, but to join you as brothers and sisters in Christ as we proclaim together that we recognize Christie's calling into ministry. I want to tell the body of First Baptist Church in Fremont what an incredible woman of faith that you are getting. I have been Christie's mentor throughout her education training to be a commissioned minister. But more than that, she is my friend. We have walked alongside each other in life, not just spiritually. We've gone through children that have been sick and in ICU units, brain surgeries, ups and downs with ministries, and the loss of parents. It is during these critical times, I think, when you can see one's character the most. When the stress can be unbearable and the grief insurmountable. And I have to share with you that not once did Christy falter. Not once. Now internally, she might have done what we all do. But her faith just rang so true no matter what she was experiencing or how she was there for me and my family during that time. Christy, I am so sorry that I am not able to be with you today. But what a joy this is. And sometimes life is difficult and we have to realize that when everything falls apart, it's because God needs to put everything back together in just the way that he can. With all of your ministry partners around you, with all of your friends and family, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you and your endurance, perseverance, determination, love for your faith in Jesus Christ. Now don't cry on me, because you're probably going to start but I know that there's someone that is not there today that you wish so desperately was, and that is your father. When I was installed and ordained, my father was not able to be there either because he is with your father today in their eternal home in heaven. But I want to tell you that your father would be so proud of you as a daughter and what you have dedicated your life for. And that is the loving of people and of children that are around you. First Baptist Church, I want you to know that Christy has three passions in life. Her family, her faith in God and Jesus Christ, and children, the youth. And she has this amazing ability 
of being able to meet them exactly where they are and having them understand that they're valuable, they're significant, and they are important not only to God and Jesus, but to her. And that makes an incredible difference in the world. You might be thinking, how would Lisa know how she is as a youth minister, right? Well, I have to tell you, before I came to faith, Christy, she was my children's youth minister. We were at churches that didn't have big youth departments. But Christy took Skylar and Noah under her wings to lock-ins and for late night talks. My children are all adopted and the road laid before them is sometimes difficult. She has been a mentor to them, a resource to them, a friend to them, and a pastor to them. So I am joining with all the parents today that are gathered around you in recognizing the calling that Christy has to be a youth minister. Would you all join with me with, for the great honor of praying over her ministry? Gracious Lord God, we come to you today. And as we enter into your presence, please do not let our praise only drip from our lips, but let it drip from our hearts. But more than anything, Lord God, please do not let it falter there and reside there, never to move beyond. Help us to transform our praise of you into action, into reaching out to people that we normally wouldn't, and going places that we normally haven't in order to see what doors you have opened for us. I lift up to you First Baptist Church in Fremont and all of its worshiping body. Lord God, bless them. Rise up to them the ministry and the special, unique works that you have carved out in your kingdom just for them. I ask that you breathe new life into them, encourage them, lift them up, heal them, restore them, and be proud of them. Lord God, I lift up Christy to you. I thank you, Lord God, for creating her, for all the ways that you have blessed her, have blessed me and my family through her. Lord God, ministry is difficult. I ask that you just breathe life into her as she begins to meet young people where they are. And most often, where they are is messy places, messy homes, messy hearts, messy communities. Lord God, give her the fortitude and the discernment to know what needs to be said, and how to say it. When to do action, and how to do it. And how to love abundantly, even when your voice feels like it's incredibly quiet. Lord God, bless her. Bless her family. Pull her sons around you. Lift her husband up and pour into them as she is pouring in to others. Lord God, more than anything else, send her sweet reminders of her father today. Let her know that he is there in spirit, gazing down upon her, and is incredibly proud of the young woman that she has become. We ask all of this in your name, amen. What is amazing about Jesus Christ is that he had a phenomenal ability of seeing the invisible, loving the unlovable, and forgiving the unforgivable. I have to tell you, those are amazing traits that we all aspire to. Most of the time we fall short. But in my life, 
Christy has been part of that anchor that shows me that special part of Jesus that allows us all to humble ourselves before him and be part of the body of Christ. Take care. Have a wonderful day of fellowship. I love you, Christy, and I can't wait to see you soon. Take care. God bless. That was really powerful. <laughs> she knew I'd be done. <laughs> and we also got you a small, a small gift for Thank you. being our new youth minister. And we're just so happy that you're here with us. And we welcome you and your family. And anyone else that you want to bring to us, we just love you so much already. And we're just so proud of you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Welcome, Christy. As I came into church this morning, I was looking around for green shirts. Those of you who were here Wednesday night know the story of green shirts. We had so many of them out there, and it was a joy to see so many people from First Baptist out there welcoming the truck drivers and the kids. Thank you. Uh, well, Nola still has a green shirt on. It's not the same one, though. <laughs> Now, we're going to sing some songs that tell a little bit about what women in our church do. So first, turn to uh, number 446. We have a story to tell to the nations, and we will be singing verse 1, 3, and 5. 4, excuse me. 1, 3, and 4. Please rise. Please turn next to 444, which is just one flip back. I love to tell the story. We will be singing 1, 3, and 4.
now we'll, we will be singing 410, and we will be singing the first and last um, <coughs> verses of the, that song. And, Thank you. You may be seated. was one of the reasons I asked for somebody to bring me up. <laughs> I have been asked to do a mission presentation this morning for our American Baptist women. Every Sunday in our bulletins, we have a brief bio and a photo of some of our American Baptist missionaries. What do we do with this information? My hope and prayer is that we pray for these families and the work that they do. And secondly, that this information makes us more aware of the needs and that when we take our fall world mission offering, we will give generously to the support of the more than 120 plus missionaries who serve in over 30 countries around the world. Our missionaries have helped to train thousands of national workers who work in the fields along with them. These national workers also are in touch with our international ministries. Today I'm going to highlight two mi missionaries and their events that have happened in the last six months. These come from their journals. Each missionary writes journals and they're written and they're published on their international in on the web page and they come from there. The first one is from Kihomi and Zunga. Kihomi and Zunga have been in our church. We've been, several of us have been able to meet them, host them, and have them, and know what a delightful couple they are. They serve in Haiti. This is what they wrote on August 8th. One day I would love to relive again is August 8th, 2018. I left the house early to go to Ba Limbe to see how a new pump that they were digging was going. The road is rocky and driving on it was like tap dancing. I prayed for the tires. Kihomi has been working in this village many times with the women and for the economic development and training and the supervision or the relief ministry. She knows well the needs of this village and she recommended that they needed a pump. When I got to the place, I had a big surprise. Women and children were lining up to stock the water in their plastic containers. The scene started at 10 a.m. and went well beyond 2 p.m. All of them thank God for this pump in their midst. The village has not had a drop of rain in months. 
The rivers were all dried up, and the water had become like gold in the village. A scene like this revives our zeal to be here and to serve the poor, the needy, and the people who have no titles, and they are in need of water. Thank you for being the channels of God to help us give them water when they are in badly need of it. Each one of these wells costs them three to 4000 to uh, drill, cap them, pump them, and have them installed. And uh, that's what Kihomi and Zunga do. The next one I'm going to tell you about is Anne and Bill Clemmer. He is a doctor and she is a, a teacher. They serve at Heal Africa Hospital in the Democratic Republic in Africa. They have an interesting story, but one of our women here in First Baptist is also a part of that story, and that is our own Esther Bechtel. Um, the person that uh, Anne writes about, she tells about a little girl that was her name, her name was, I've got to get a, get a hold of it here. <laughs> okay. Amenia, Amenia. She crawled up on her lap while she was in chapel. And this little girl just snuggled into her lap. And she wondered, what this little girl was doing. She found out that this little girl was there because her grandmother was a patient there. Little Amenia's mother had abandoned her and her grandmother had taken her in. Her grandmother had, had been in a terrible accident. Two months ago, she was traveling on top of a transport truck with a sack of small charcoal stoves when the truck had an accident and flipped over. She sold those stoves in order to make a living. That it ended up on top of her. They ended up taking Ruth to the Heal Africa Hospital and they took Amina with her because there was no place for her to go. When she arrived at the hospital, the doctors could not save Ruth's leg. Her doc, little Ruth, uh, little Amina sat outside of the operating room while they amputated Ruth's leg. And she had come in and was now sharing her grandmother's bed. As long as her grandmother was a patient there, little Amina could have the run of the hospital grounds. Ruth then was visited by Anne, our missionary. And she was very anxious. What am I going to do to earn a living to take care of little Amina when I go back to the village? I'm not going to be able to go and buy these charcoal pots and sell them. And so she told them of a program that they had with some of the other women she said, we have started a knitting program months ago with gifts from our American Baptist women. And those gifts were knitting needles and knitting supplies. And Esther had sent some of those supplies. And so our women have been a part of this project. And so here Ruth had some of these. She asked, Beatrice, a Congolese friend who was teaching knitting, will you teach Ruth to crochet? And in within a week, Ruth had taken the challenge to heart. She was a quick learner. She made small purses. She hung them on her walker so passersby could see them. And she was starting to make enough money to feed herself and little Amina. She had learned a new skill that she could take back to her village. We are a part of being able to be 
with these people because of our work through our giving, through our praying, and it is because we give and we pray. Ruth Mooney from Costa Rica, who is one of our missionaries, is going to be a guest in Fremont on October 3rd and 4th. She's going to be in our church with our children and youth on October 3rd. She's going to be a guest of our women on October 4th at our monthly meeting in the parlor. We invite all to come and hear her. Our White Cross projects that you've heard about this morning already help our missionaries. We are called to serve God by praying for them and by giving to the offerings. This is how we help our missionaries. And we ask that you will do that. And if any one of you want to see a picture of the uh, people getting their water from the well with their plastic buckets, I have it on my iPad today that I can show you after the service. For, <clears throat> excuse me, for ushers would come forward, please. have a prayer and then we'll start. Father who is the giver of everything, the one who supplies our needs far beyond what we could ever imagine, we thank you for those gifts. We thank you for the gifts of the children that appeared and the men and women that appeared on our street this week and we just ask that um, we ask that we give in thanks and thanksgiving for all that he is given to us and to return a little bit of that. Amen. could bow your heads for a moment of thanksgiving. Father God, I just want to thank you for your presence here today. I want to thank you for the women who have come forward to be part of the service. I want to thank you for Christy and her commitment to our church and to the children and youth of our church. I pray for all the women out there who might be hurting from losing someone or having a loss in their life, and I pray that we all can experience the joy and the love of Christ as he comes to us in fellowship. Amen. I am just a little bit nervous. As I tell people I don't preach, I only share messages, okay? <laughs> but today I'd like to share this message of women's work on this American Baptist Women's Sunday. 
1987, I gave birth to my first child, my oldest child, my daughter Erin. And in 1990, I gave birth to my son Ryan. And in 1993, my third child, my daughter Lauren, who happens to be here today. And finally, in 1995, my fourth and final child, Shannon, was born. And I'm thankful, really, that each child was actually born in a different state and in a different house because they were all blonde. And so I can just look at the color of the carpet and figure out in the picture if I didn't write who it was on the back, which child it was. So I am actually thankful for that. And I often tell people that I don't really remember 1995 very well after four children in seven and a half years. I was pretty busy. I was pretty overwhelmed with mothering. But I absolutely loved being a mom. And for most of those years, I was blessed with the ability to stay home and take care of my children. And introducing the children to the world around us, to read books, to play, to cook, occasionally clean. Teaching my children, just the whole routine of mothering was something that I really enjoyed and was very fulfilling for me. But there were definitely days that I had major mom fails. And I think like most moms, if I had to do it again, I'd stress a lot less about cleaning the house and all the activities that we participated in and trying to create those perfect holidays. And I would just slow down and enjoy those years of little children. I truly felt God's leading to this adventure of mothering. I felt his hand on me, and I knew that it was my mission for that time in my life. But, like all children, my little ones aren't so little anymore. And my period of intensive mothering ended well over a decade ago. And although I still text and FaceTime and call my children, I am no longer teaching them too much. They are probably teaching me much more. And the season of raising my family has ended. And although that season of mothering is over, in the seasons that have followed, my women's work has evolved and changed. And so I ask, what is women's work? What does God ordain women to do? What is God's expectation of us? What does God lead to us to do in our lives? And what exactly is women's work? Today on American Baptist Women's Sunday, I reflected on the role of the woman in our family, in our communities, in our churches, and in our world. As the American Baptist women developed their ministry focus for 2017 through 2019, they chose the name Feel, and they chose this verse from Acts to illuminate that theme. Acts 17, 27, and 28 in the New Living Translation. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. And though he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and we move and exist. And as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. I'm choosing this verse to define women's work. Because the work we do as women, and men as well, should be work that brings us closer to God. Our endeavors, our labors, our struggles, our occupation, our volunteer hours, even our daily tasks, this whole busyness of life should always bring us closer to God. So what fulfills you? What is it that brings you closer to God? What is the work that you hear God calling you to do? What is the women's work that God is placing before you for the purpose, of course, of bringing you closer to him? How do you recognize that what you agree to and what you engage in every day is the work that God wants you to do? What I've discovered in my own life, that my women's work is usually work that takes me out of my comfort zone. It's work that makes me rethink my beliefs, and make me review my perceptions, challenging me to see the world with new eyes, confronting those beliefs I hold, and requiring me to see the world as God sees it. And it kind of sounds like a difficult task. I mean, I think like sometimes you need to be King Solomon to figure out what God wants you to do, right? But I've learned that God usually puts that work right in front of me. And it only becomes difficult when I overthink it, or I decide I'm not qualified, or I'm not able to do it. And how do you and I, as this family of First Baptist Church in Fremont, Nebraska, 
accomplish the work that God desires of us, our women's work and our men's work, the work that he sees that he wants from us. And I believe in many ways we're already fulfilling what God's desire is for us. We're already doing our women's work. Because women's work is showing up on a Wednesday night, providing a wonderful evening for 200 or so people from Fremont by bringing together a bunch of big trucks, and allowing kids to sit in them and honk their horns, and feeding them some hot dogs, creating an awareness that our church seeks to share the love of Christ. Women's work occurs when we're praying for each other, checking in with each other, listening to our heartaches and our joys, choosing to understand and accept and support without judgment. Women's work is grieving together. When families experience loss, creating a time of caring with a meal and fa for the families to share memories of loved ones and easing that way through a difficult time. Women's work is ensuring that every Wednesday night there's a meal and a room for kids to gather to learn about Jesus and the love that he has for us. Women's work is commissioning, empowering, and supporting a young woman in ministry, helping her develop her gifts of evangelism and pastoral care, giving Christy the opportunity to pursue the work that God has given her, to give her her women's work. And women's work doesn't stop inside the walls of a church. Through our denomination and the ministries of American Baptist Women's Ministries, we actually can affect change, not only in our town, but also in our country and even our world. Because women's work is partnering with international ministries, with ministries such as Jill Lowry from the Congo, who enables economic security for the women of the Congo with her work of the women in the Mintendi School. American Baptist women heard the call and raised over $100,000 for Mintendi Women's Center. Women's work right now is rebuilding the ministries of women in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria providing seed money to women's ministries to develop programs that directly engage with the women and girls on the island. Women's work is providing scholarship so that two Arab Baptist women in Lebanon can, attern the, can attend the Arab Baptist Theological Seminary and prepare them to bring Christ and minister to the Arab world. Women's work provides housing subsidies, counseling, and training for the women in Springfield, Massachusetts, women who are seeking a life of sober living after drug and alcohol abuse at the Covenant House and Greater New Life Center. Women's work is raising awareness about the plight of young women who are victims of human trafficking and providing resources to help them move from a life inside the sex industry in Uganda, in Kenya, in Thailand, in Malawi, but also in Oregon, New Jersey, Montana, Kansas, and Oklahoma, and to raise nearly a half a million dollars to support that work. It is through this work that we draw nearer to God, because we are given the opportunity to see the world as God sees it, to those who need his healing and respond to it. And we return to that verse in Acts. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Women's work also requires that we take care of ourselves. We as women, we're notorious for exhausting ourselves, taking care of everyone else, and that's kind of true for our organization as well. American Baptist Women's Ministries, it provides opportunities for women, women of all ages, older women, middle-aged women, young women, girls, to develop those leadership skills and experience opportunities to serve, even myself. Serving on the national leadership team challenged me to understand and respond to issues that were new to me, things I'd never even thought of, requiring me to engage in problem solving and communicate to large groups of people. The opportunities, the opportunities that I've been given are ones that I would have never seen myself engaging in. Sharing my story with women and then sitting and praying with them and crying with them as they shared their hurts from their life with me and with God. The mission of American Baptist Women's Ministries is to encourage and empower women and girls to serve God. 
seeking God, drawing closer to him, and serving him. Meeting our mission of empowering women and girls means that women have raised millions of dollars to fund missionaries, mission stations, projects. We have rolled millions of bandages. We have sent letters and cards to missionaries. We have bought bicycles, sewing machines, vans, computers. We have funded clinics. We have educated health workers. But one thing we really haven't done well, actually, is to fund ourselves our national office. As an organization that efficiently provides the central location for coordinating the ministries of each group of American Baptist women, providing a voice on the national stage for issues that we believe are important for women, care for refugees, education, health care, families, children. We are the locus that allows all these other ministries to happen. As you seek your own women's work, as you pursue your White Cross projects, you're supporting the missionaries and the Bible studies, remember that American Baptist Women's Ministries is there too and contribute to our national organization. I have grown, I have evolved, I have changed in all these seasons of my life, from mothering and then teaching and learning how to be the wife of a pastor, my work has changed. My work and the way I serve God has changed because I've become more aware of the situations that women find themselves in, sometimes through their own choices and sometimes just through the circumstances of their birth. And my belief is that God wants me to respond with compi compassion kindness, and love. For the women of the United States and around the world, the women of the American Baptist churches and American Baptist women's ministries have provided opportunities for me to respond to women. And those opportunities have been this impetus for my personal growth, which has drawn me closer to God, challenging me, supporting me, allowing me to make mistakes along the way, believing in me well before I believed I had any of those skills, ultimately allowing me to pursue women's work and draw closer to God and experience God. Seeking to find work that brings us closer to God and helps us experience him in our daily lives, that is our women's work. And it's our men's work as well. I ask you on this American Baptist Women's Sundays to seek the guidance of God as you learn what your women's work is. Where does God want you right now? And where is he leading you in the future? Just pondering for a moment, actually, the words, the verse from Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10, because whatever you do, do it well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. Do it well. Do it now. This is our opportunity, and this is our moment. This is our time. I encourage you, find your women's work and your men's work and experience this opportunity to draw closer to God and see the world from his perspective. If you could join me in prayer. Thank you, God, for this American Baptist Women's Sunday, for the knowledge that we can gather here, join together, and experience a moment to draw closer to you. Thank you, God, for the many women around the world who are working hard in their women's work, taking care of their families, and also advocating for those in the world who may not know you. Bless us this week as we go about doing your work as our women's work. And help us to understand where you want us each day. Amen. Our invitation hymn today is number 705. Nola chose this song, and I hope you will all get the feeling of it. And should anyone decide that they would like to uh, answer the calling of the Holy Spirit tapping on your shoulder today, please see Pastor after. Thank you. It is well with my soul.
Let's bow for the closing prayer. And when we're through on the inside cover of your back, of your bulletin, is the benediction. We will all say, cite that together. Heavenly God, make us worthy of this day, which you have brought to us. Help us cope with fear and frustration. Keep us from complaining. Reveal your plans for each of our lives. Help us to find continuing fulfillment in helping you with your work. Amen. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. to the coffee hour to share a cake that we have here in celebration of Christy.